every galaxy, every planet and star, you, everyone and everything you love are made out of matter. But there is something in our universe that is the mirror opposite of matter. The reason why you and I are here. Which is the biggest unsolved question we as human have. In this video I will tell you what antimatter is, how it's made, how you can even find it at home, and how we use it in our medical fields. It's 1927. We had Einstein's equations to understand how objects behave, been moving at nearly the speed of light, and quantum mechanics to explain how very tiny objects like electrons behave. But there was a problem. Quantum mechanics didn't work at high speeds. So Paul Dirac enters the scene. He tries to make these equations work together. He worked day after day after day until, uh huh, he came up with a new equation. But every time he did the calculation, he got two answers, one positive and one negative. Think about it like the square root of 4. The answer is plus 2 and minus 2. His equation suggested that there was a negative energy. To explain this, he predicted a mirror opposite particle, antimatter. Every particle of matter has an antimatter counterpart with the same mass but opposite charge. For example, the charge of an electron is negative, but the charge of its antimatter counterpart is positive which is called a positron. Proton positive, antiproton negative. But what about neutrons? They don't have a charge. Well, neutrons are made out of quarks, and the quarks have fractional charges that add up to zero. Therefore, they are neutral. The antineutron is made out of antiquarks, so its quarks have the opposite charge. Now, if a matter and antimatter particle come into contact with each other, they annihilate turning 100% of their mass into energy. E equals mc squared. And that brings us to how it's made. Antimatter is the rarest thing in our universe. In fact, it's so rare that a gram of antimatter is worth around 60 trillion dollars. And it's made most naturally. For example, every second, high energy cosmic rays strike Earth's upper atmosphere. After colliding with air molecules, they produce lots of secondary particles, including electrons and positrons. But these positrons don't last long, because they instantly annihilate with other electrons in the air. Some radioactive elements also create antimatter. For example, carbon-11. It's unstable and it decays over time. Interestingly, something in your kitchen is doing this right now. Bananas. Bananas contain potassium-40 making them a tiny source of antimatter. Those were the natural ways. But we also create antimatter artificially. We even have antimatter factories, which is absolutely crazy. I made a whole video about that in our community. You can join today for free and watch the video. As strange as antimatter is, we use it to save lives. As I mentioned earlier, some radioactive elements release antimatter as they decay. Some of these radioactive elements are not harmful and can be injected into a patient's body. After injection, they gather in cancer cells and release positrons. These positrons annihilate instantly with electrons inside the body, producing two gamma rays that travel in opposite direction. A PET scan then detects these gamma rays and identifies the location of the cancer cells. 